I've noticed over the past few days uh, a talking point that is spreading on the right, both uh, in right wing media and also elected Republicans that the fear you might be feeling about coronavirus is not based in fact. It is the desire of the media to make you go mad because they think that will hurt Donald Trump in the election. So we've got a number of examples of this. We're gonna go first to Mick Mulvaney. The reason you're paying so, you're saying so much attention to it today is that they think this is gonna be what brings down the president. That's what this is all about. Really what I might do today calm the markets is tell the people to turn their televisions off for 24 hours. Okay, so that is, um, well I was gonna say that's not just some right wing whack job. I guess it's not just a right wing whack job. He's also the acting chief of staff, um, but he was there in front of a crowd saying uh, the media wants you to be scared, not so that you know you won't you know expose yourself to danger, you'll take the threat seriously, um, but specifically just to hurt Donald Trump. Oh yes, a right wing whack job who has a lot of power, mm -hmm. isn't that so great? Yeah. The new reality that we're living in, people talking as if they're Rush Limbaugh, as if they're Alex Jones, but being one of the most you know, powerful 20 people in the country, it's lovely. Mm -hmm. Has the ear of Donald Trump on a daily basis and just completes to completely feeds him sycophantic garbage. It's it's I love, yeah. love this timeline. <laughs> and if you like that, you might like this. That wasn't the only thing Mick Mulvaney had to say. Here he is talking about the actual threat posed by coronavirus. Is it real? It absolutely is real. There's no question about it. But you saw the president the other day, the flu is real. At any particular time, 20 million people in this country are going to have the flu. The flu kills people, it does. This is not Ebola. It looks like this disease is someplace between one and 2% fatal. Is that serious? It absolutely is, there's no question about it, okay? But it's not, it's not a death sentence. It's not the same as, as, as the Ebola crisis. Right. But this is something we, we deal with. This is something we know how to deal with. That's why we sit there and watch the markets and there's this huge panic. Like, why isn't there this panic every single year over flu? Are you going to see some schools shut down? Probably. May you see impacts on public transportation? Sure, but we do this. We know how to handle this. I don't even know where to know where to begin. It's that is wrong in so sentence. many ways. It's not a death sentence. Okay, yeah, until we find out a way to actually treat it. We have a way to treat the flu. I'm not sure if you're aware of this, mm -hmm. but there are ways to treat the flu. This is spreading at a rapid rate and we still have not found. Well, you think the flu shot's medicine? Um, oh, I see. I know, I'd rather take my gorilla <laughs> my gorilla hair supplements or whatever those mm -hmm. right wing whack jobs saw on the internet. Uh, yeah, but so you reference that it's not a death sentence, I love that he went very smoothly from what does it kill, one to two percent? It's not a death sentence, except presumably for those one to two percent, which represent thousands of people that have already died. And by the way, these loose associations with the flu, the only good to come out of all of this is that maybe people will take the flu more seriously. Because I don't think most people knew how many people die every year just from the seasonal flu in the United States alone. Um, there are a lot of differences, as Emma rightly pointed out. We understand the flu, we have treatments, we have shots you can take beforehand. We do actually have something we can do about the flu. We don't really have that for the coronavirus and we don't necessarily know when we're gonna get it. That's a pretty big difference. Um, the flu I read kills about 0.1%, it might even be less than that. That's a big difference between that and 2% and it's not 2%, it's 2% overall. But when you talk about older people, it shoots up in the highest age demographic, it is 15%. That is. I mean, look, if, if I told you you could do something, there's a 50% chance you're gonna die, you might consider that a death sentence, I, I think might. rightfully so. I might. And, and here's the thing, I understand, everybody wants to stop people from getting unnecessarily panicked. But talking to that crowd about a disease we don't have a vaccine for and we don't necessarily know how to treat, at least to stop people. We have people who have been, who have been taken in with the disease, there's doctors there and they die, to say that's not a death sentence. It's the flu, how irresponsible a chief of staff of the White House to tell people it's all gonna be fine, you'll get it. It's like the cold, it's like the flu, what's the difference? And he's echoing, by the way, what Trump said. Trump in an official press conference said, it's like the flu. It's worse in some ways, it's better in other ways. What way is it better? <laughs> how is it better? That is so such a great point by you. And I also just wanted to point out, Fox News, they've gotta be bummed that this is the narrative coming from the White House because they don't get to fear monger and blow things up more than they normally would. I mean, this is something that people should actually be fearful about. But 
Fox loves to say, "Oh, black people, Muslim people, those are the things that you should be afraid of when their dear leader, Donald Trump, is misleading people about what they truly should be afraid of and truly should be taking precautions against. But because the coronavirus isn't wearing a hoodie and isn't a black teenager, I guess mm. this isn't the kind of stuff you want to devote to your airwaves and make people afraid that perhaps the government does not have your best interest at heart here because it's run by right wing sociopaths who would rather see the Dow skyrocket up mm. than care about thousands of people in this country potentially dying from a disease that we do not understand. And I, and my heart does go out to the hosts and producers at Fox News. They're you know, between a rock and a hard place where they would love to fear monger about foreign diseases creeping in. Now we have to lock down the border. But the more they do that, the more they confirm that the media taking this seriously are probably doing the right thing. So it's really a hard choice. I don't know how you come out on that. A catch twenty two. It is or exactly a catch catch core. What's it? Nineteen. COVID nineteen. Catch. Yeah. It's I a should, catch nineteen. I shouldn't start my jokes um, before knowing where they're going. You know what? It was a laudable goal. Oh. Aim for the stars. Uh, let's go to, uh, we had their chief of staff here, Rush Limbaugh, the guy that Mike Pence goes and talks with. Here he is talking about the disease. This coronavirus thing, I wanna try to put this in perspective for you. It looks like the coronavirus being weaponized as yet another element to bring down Donald Trump. Right now, the media is reporting on the coronavirus as they hope it evolves. They hope for hurricanes on the first day of hurricane season. They hope for Hurricane Katrina so they can say climate change. Anything to advance the leftist agenda. Now, the leftist agenda includes getting rid of Trump. They would love for the coronavirus to be this deadly strain that wipes everybody out so they can blame Trump for it. Don't doubt me on that. Okay, so this is not the last time you're gonna hear, again, not, not just some whack job. He was visited by the guy coordinating the coronavirus response. He just said, the media, the Dems, they want mass numbers of people to die because it will hurt Donald Trump. That's, I mean, what? <sighs> I, I know that we live in crazy times. I don't know what we're supposed to say to that. Like, we're. Are, are, are the Democrats bringing the coronavirus over the border with the refugees that we want to have a mm -hmm. good life? Um, well, he, he effectively said something similar to that during the Ebola crisis. He said that's, Obama, yeah, exactly. is that what you're alluding to? Well, kind of, yeah. Okay, yeah, he said, he, he said that Obama wants Ebola to kill people in the United States as revenge for slavery. That's what Medal of Freedom <laughs> recipient uh, Rush Limbaugh said. So yeah, now we, we want people to die. Um, who, who, who exactly? Like the, the libs, we're trying to get people to be cautioned against this, to be prepared for this. All the right wing media personalities are going out there and doing broadcasts every day telling people, you shouldn't worry about this at all. It's not an actual concern, don't worry about it. They're blowing out of, out of proportion. Trump today during Chopper Talk was asked, do you think all of this coverage is a hoax? And he said, well, um, yes, CNN is a disreputable organization. Like, yes. What does CNN have to do with anything? They're spreading coronavirus. Uh, um, so really, you? who is encouraging deaths? The person who says, Hey, take this seriously, take precautions. The people say, you're being hoaxed by fake news CNN, don't worry about it. It's basically the flu. Yeah, that, I mean, I wanted to say you should trademark Chopper Talk, but that was kind oh, of- Oh No, I didn't come up with that. Oh. <laughs> That's all over the place, I but gave, thank you. That is I very nice of you. I gave you too much credit. <laughs> it might have, it might, might have been Colbert first. Anyway, okay. um, so that was Rush Limbaugh, uh, but we also have uh, Pete Hegseth. One of the reasons I wanna go to him is you might recall, he was like this far from being the head of the VA, almost chosen by Trump. And here he is again talking about the media and coronavirus. I don't want to say this. It's not, uh, doesn't, I don't relish the reality, but you start to feel, you really do. Watch the Democrats, watch the media. You start to feel like they're rooting for coronavirus to spread. And I don't say that flippantly, I really don't. But they're rooting for it to grow, they're rooting for the problem to get worse, they're rooting for mysteries, unknown cases, quarantines, towns, for it to become an absolute national crisis for one reason and one reason alone. They have yet to find a reason to try to drag down the presidency of Donald Trump. Even though it is not the fault of Donald Trump, they will try to 
pin it to him like his Katrina moment and make it political. And so a headline like this lays bare their intentions because we know it already, they just won't say it. So I, th I think it's, it's important to say it because we know it's in the backs of the minds of a lot of Democrats. So what happens is Donald Trump can give whatever response he wants to give to coronavirus. And that's really what he's saying, he should have immunity from whatever decisions he makes in that response because the Democrats are just gonna criticize him no matter what. Mm -hmm. On like, like he's having a terrible response, we're freaked out and then he, and, and they're criticized, no, we want you to help prevent this further. We're freaked out by the coronavirus, the left and the rest of the country, Trump, do something about this. And because of that criticism, we are the ones that want people to die, mm -hmm. people to die from coronavirus. And look, as I as I referenced on the damage report uh, earlier today, I will remind you that Pete Hegseth is the guy who said on Fox News that he hasn't washed his hands in 10 years. So maybe learn about that before you start talking about us encouraging the spread of germs. Um, yeah, and look, like he's he's an influential guy. Like he has the ear of the president, and uh, the thing is, is that. It shouldn't be that shocking that he's saying this sort of thing because um, Trump and his family are also encouraging the same sort of rhetoric. Here is the son of the president. Are you surprised the way they've been handling the coronavirus situation, meaning Democrats? Uh, not at all. I mean, we've seen, like you said, we've seen this play out for four years. Anything that they can use to try to hurt Trump, they will. Anything he does in a positive sense, like you heard from the reporter that was just suspended from ABC, they will not give him credit for. The playbook is old at this point. But for them to try to take a pandemic and seemingly hope that it comes here and kills millions of people so that they could end Donald Trump's streak of winning is a new level of sickness. He went on to accuse the New York Times of either being infected with Trump derangement syndrome or coronavirus. I accuse him of bad beard syndrome and bad beard virus. It's actually spreading on the right these days. Um, but anyway, there he was more clear. Pete Hegseth said, we in the media want lots of people to die. <laughs> John, Don Jr. said, we want millions to die. <laughs> we want to rule over the ashes effectively. I think I, that really does come through that plot in Bernie Sanders, all of his speeches about how everyone should have health insurance and access to health care. Yeah, we definitely want people to die. Oh, can I mention one thing? So this is P. Hegseth's point about uh, the, the media is hoping for Trump's Kat, or Katrina moment. And here's the thing, I remember Katrina. You know what was so damaging to Bush about Katrina? Not that the storm happened, that is not why people turned on George W. Bush. It was the incompetent handling of it. It was allowing people to die when it wasn't necessary because they didn't take it seriously and they didn't prioritize the lives of the people that live there. And so when he flew over and looked down occasionally and when he heck of a job, a job brownied, that was not taking it seriously. That's why it was bad for him. So Trump, again, I will say this for the millionth time, is not responsible for coronavirus being transmitted to humans. He's not even responsible for it making its way into America. But if he locks down information, if he spreads disinformation, if he sends people off to deal with these people without the proper training or equipment, if he makes it materially more likely that people die as a result of coronavirus, it very much is his Katrina moment. Because that is his anti-science, ignorant, I don't wanna swear, approach to the world that is endangering lives, the same as George W. Bush. Katrina couldn't have been stopped, the storm. The deaths could have been stopped, that was the problem. And we're seeing it potentially in real time. Thanks for watching The Young Turks, really appreciate it. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. You'll get to interact with us more, there's live chat emojis, badges. You've got emojis of me, Anna, John, JR, so those are super fun, but you also get playback of our exclusive member only shows and specials right after they air. So all of that, all you gotta do is click that join button right underneath the video, thank you.